In Buddhism, we often hear the mysterious sounding words karma and emptiness. Karma, as we learned before, in its most basic form, means that if you do good deeds, good results come. And if you do bad deeds, bad results come. Emptiness, one of Buddhism's most advanced teachings, explains how all phenomena exist interdependently without concrete inherent identities. Karma and emptiness are inseparably woven together in a mystical union and understanding how they work together is essential in practicing the path of enlightenment. More than mere philosophical theories, the technical understanding of karma and emptiness gives us practical tools to use in our daily lives, especially when we're facing difficulties in relationships, at work, or with our emotions. In this show, we will come to understand that because things are empty of separate concrete identities, it is essential for us to observe the law of karma and act in an ethical way. The teachings that you're about to hear on, uh, on karma emptiness are in many ways the essence of Mahayana. They are certainly the, um, the essence of Nagarjuna's insights and the Madhyamaka philosophy. Karma and emptiness um, as a pair are often misunderstood in Buddhist philosophy uh, and many think that in fact, they are contradictory, but this is not at all the case. They are very much complementary, because one is true, then so is the other. So, because these are so important, these teachings are so important to, uh, to the Mahayana understanding of Buddhism, then it's also very important that you have a Mahayana motivation as you listen to these teachings. So, remember the suffering of sentient beings, Remember that our goal is enlightenment, which is the only state in which we can really relieve the suffering of sentient beings as you listen to these teachings. If we want to put an end to suffering, then we have to realize the ultimate nature of phenomena, the final you know, status nature of a phenomena, which is called emptiness or shunyata or sunata. And that's the only way you know, we can liberate ourselves from the state of uh, uh, samsara and its uh, uh, suffering. So once we have done that, we have put an end to suffering, uh, then we have realized uh, the state of liberation or nirvana or nibbana, and this state is uh, peace. Okay, this is uh, where we find uh, you know, a real uh, uh, peace. 
again, the great Indian uh, master Acharya Chantakirti in his uh, Madhimik avatar or supplement to the Middle Way uh, states clearly that all beings have been born from karma. So how do we end up creating all such karma, if you wonder? Uh, what is the underlying cause? Yeah. Uh, the underlying cause is, uh, you see, our own ignorance of grasping at self. And I must make this clear that this is not an ordinary kind of ignorance. It's not like you don't know about something. Okay? But this particular ignorance is what we call ignorance of grasping at self. Okay? And being under the influence of this grasping at self, ignorance, that we create both good and bad karmic actions, and these karmic actions only bring good and bad results in samsara. Okay? That's why when we are under the influence of this grasping at self, we create karmic actions, they do not become causes for us to uh, achieve complete enlightenment. Okay? They bring their good and bad results within samsara or sikh existence. So it's through realizing emptiness that we can uproot our ignorant conception of grasping itself, and when that is done, when that is uprooted, then we find uh, complete liberation or nirvana. So if emptiness is, uh, is, uh, is a must, you know, uh, is something must that everybody must, uh, you know, realize in order to be liberated, then how can we, what's the best way to approach, to understand emptiness or realize emptiness? The best method or the reason to approach, to understand uh, emptiness is uh, that of a dependent arising. So I want uh, you to I mean, take time to I mean, understand that uh, there isn't anything uh, that exists inherently, meaning in and of itself. So what you should understand that everything exists dependently. Okay, everything is a dependent, uh, dependent arising. Yeah? So the dependent arising does not necessarily mean that everything has been produced by causes and conditions. Dependent arising also means that things, you see, are interconnected with other things. Okay? And things exist in relation to each other. Okay? Things are dependent upon one another. Okay? So dependent arising, you see, it is a very broad concept, and it has a... Uh, multiple uh, I mean, levels of understanding. So everything exists dependently. So therefore, you must understand that nothing exists is in and of itself, you see, non-dependently. Okay. If something exists in and of itself, objectively, then that thing must not change, you know, uh, at all. And as at times, it's because of our different karmas, the different realities exist for us as different beings. Now, let me give you this example of like, uh, let's say we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, a cup of water, right? Now, when the celestial beings or the divine beings look at it, you see, what they see is more than water. You see, they see uh, ambrosia or nectar in that cup, okay? So it's more than water. But when we human beings look at it, we see it as a water. Okay. But now when the hungry ghosts look at it, because of their karma, they even don't see water. Forget about seeing nectar. They see probably pus and blood. Yeah, you see. So looking at the same thing, because of our different karmas, different realities, you see, exist for us. See. So we experience them differently. And uh, so, so everything is labeled by, you see, terms and concept. Okay. And nothing exists from its own side without labeling, without mental imputation. Okay? So therefore, there's nothing which exists in and of itself, okay? objectively. No. Now, if you don't understand that nature of phenomena, which is, is emptiness, how everything exists dependently, therefore everything is empty of inherent existence, objective existence, true existence, then there's no way, there's no other way that we can uh, put an end to our suffering and problem.
that's really out here if you're being scientific is a, is a green, greenish and clear cylinder of plastic. And then if you have a certain kind of karma, then that karma will force you to see it as a pen. And it does it so convincingly that you believe there's a pen coming from there to you, okay? That the pen, uh, that this object itself has some kind of penness to it. And it's so natural and it's so slick and it's so smooth. We say 65 frames of karma ripening per second, uh, which is the refresh time for a computer, by the way. You know, the screen refreshes between 15 and 80 times a, a second. So it, it gives you the illusion of a, of a solid screen. Okay? And, uh, and that same thing is happening. And it seems to you that uh, the thing is a pen in and of itself, from its own time. So that's the emptiness of a pen. Why? Because if a dog walked in here and I show the thing to a dog, he also will see a cylinder. So the cylinder nest, or the cylinder, is shared between the human <coughs> realm and the animal realm. Both the human and the animal uh, see a cylinder. Okay? Uh, that's where it ends. And then the dividing line between the animal realm and the human realm is that the dog will see it as a something to chew on. <coughs> they can't conceptualize it as a thing. The same object, the same cylinder, and their past karma forces them to see it as something to chew on. And they get excited about chewing on it when they see it. And then the human's karma forces them to see a, a pen. It, well, I say force because you don't have any choice in the matter. I'm trying to talk, teach you about the emptiness of the pen and the emptiness of your mind. Whether you get it or not is also only a projection from your past karma. The wisdom itself, whether you hear your mind saying, I get it, now I should keep my vows. Or whether you hear yourself saying, it's kind of boring, I wonder if this doesn't going to stay up for a while. You catch some more, you know, or, or you're distracted or you're thinking about something else, you see? That's also a projection of karma. So whether or not you get it is also empty. Some people will hear something that changes their lives forever. They will go on to collect only sweet karma, which we're going to talk about how to do it. And then they'll get enlightened. And think about it, you only have two jobs in your life, okay? If the pen thing is true, you know, if this is just a green cylinder, and your karma is forcing you to see it as a pen, and the dog's karma is forcing them to see it as something to chew on, and if that's in fact what makes the dog a dog, and if that's in fact what makes a human a human, then in theory your arm could become a... Uh, Tara's arm, golden arm, or green. I like the golden. Uh, or white, actually. I like the white. Um, and it's just, a, that's the emptiness of your arm. This just means your arm is a cylinder. Your mind is forcing you, under the influence of your past karma, to see it as a hand. And when that karma wears out, this thing will stop moving, and we'll call you dead. And you will be dead, OK? Then your karma will shift again, and you'll see it as a paw or something else. So really, once you understand this principle, there's only two things left to do in your life. Uh, one, collect the most powerful karma you can. You know? Big time, powerful karma, fast. Second, get rid of your old bad karma. negative karma actually can be purified. You know, it's not the karma is also something that is impermanent, changeable. Mm -hmm. And nothing fixed, you know, uh, everlasting kind of burden that we have to carry. You know, it's not like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Uh, 
I think the, the ultimate purification of karma, you know, is uh, <clears throat> when we realize reality. When we realize reality, nature of self, uh, the nature of I, at that time, uh, when we eliminate the ignorance, remember that is the base of karma. Karma evolves out of ignorance, delusion, and then become action, karma. So once the base, you know, the foundation for karma, the ignorance has been eliminated, also, you know, no more creation of negative karma. And eventually, complete purification of all karma, so that we don't have to experience also past karma. And that's the ultimate solution, you know, to samsaric uh, uh, compulsive, samsaric rebirth and samsaric existence. But before we get there, you know, before we reach that state where we can realize reality and uh, become free from uh, delusion and karma, we have to, you know, live with our daily life experiences. So until then, you know, in order to achieve that state of liberation, we need to purify our mind. We need to purify negative karma, control our negative karma by purifying our mind. Well, learning about karma, it's, um, it's, it's kind of frightening and it's also really empowering and liberating at the same time just to learn that everything we experience is a result of our own past actions. And then to learn that we can change what happens in the future based on our actions now. So it's a big responsibility, but it's all, it was also like a feeling of freedom at the same time in that instead of it just being random where bad things happen, good things happen, and I'm kind of scrambling around trying to make good things happen and push the bad things away, that there's a very clear system of how to create happiness in the future. Um, and it's also another understanding of why I'm experiencing suffering at the present. Instead of it's her fault, it's his fault, it's the world's fault, it's no one, it, there's nobody to blame, it's just some past actions of my past mind stream ripening now in this experience of suffering. So um, it's it's difficult now. I don't necessarily always act in I don't usually act in accordance with how I would like to in accordance with karma because when we really get it and we really understand that everything we do with our body, speech, or mind is going to create the future, then naturally the only thing you would do would be things that are kind and loving and helpful towards others and you would avoid all harmful actions. Um, and I certainly don't do that now. <laughs> well, as I understand it, um, karma and emptiness, I mean, they just they couldn't exist without each other. Um, in saying everything is empty of inherent existence, it means it only appears to me in the way it appears to me because of my past actions that are forcing me to perceive it in the way that I'm perceiving it, forcing me to perceive myself in the way I'm perceiving myself, forcing me to see, perceive the people around me, the world around me, every little thing in the way that I do. So. 
I think that's, it's like emptiness is kind of the mystical part of it. Or it and then you fill in the blanks with karma. And that's how, that's just how they work together. And that's how you can, um, you can change your future and you can change your life. And it, then it can be very exciting too because it can be quick. I understand from what I've heard. <laughs> it can be quick if you really put the principles into action. You know, and then you, and you abide by um, you know, um, decreasing the negative actions, body, speech, and mind, and increasing the positive actions of body, speech, and mind. Because everything is empty, we can really change it really quickly. When you start to see the things in your life um, go bad sometimes, and uh, and it's not fun, you know, to have relationships go bad and and not have a certain project work out the way you want it. And we've been taught purification practices that those th even that those things that you've done in the past, in a sense, have the same quality that they're blank, they're empty. If it was a self-existent bad deed, then you're screwed, basically. There's no hope. You know, like, what's the point in even doing any of this anyway? You do have the power in the moment to stop the reacting negatively for the future. And that, that's like, that's a little, that's, that gives you power because, it, you know, you may have seeds that, you, you know, you have to go back and purify and, and try to think of, like, maybe some of the bad stuff you just did in this lifetime and try to make amends with those things and those people that maybe you've hurt. And then at the moment, stop reacting, st stop doing those bad things that you've been doing, you know, over and over and over again. And, ke and doing the book that Geshe La taught, you know, when you're tracking your vows six times a day. I have like a guideline of ways to, to kind of check myself a little bit. Um, and this helps me throughout the day. The idea that your world is a, a lot like a blank screen, like it isn't when you paint, means that there's a whole realm of possibility of what your life can become. That's the bottom line, is that it's not, you're not just stuck where your situation is right now. You know, like anything can happen. Anything you can dream of, anything your heart wants to do can come true because the world is lacking that self-existence. It's just a blank screen. It's just, and it's up to you to try to create the circumstances that you want to be really happy. So then the other thing is, <clears throat> is it is very important to, when you're dedicated by, by singing with the emptiness, if you don't do that, if you don't by meditating on the emptiness, if you don't dedicate merit, then what happens is <clears throat> then heavy anger rises later and then you see, then they can destroy your merits. <clears throat> so normally every day <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> to dedicate like this, <clears throat> this uh, <clears throat> Uh, this is one of my favorite, my favorite dedication. Uh, due to the past, beneficial man is collected by me. Uh, three time man is collected by others. That which exist, but do not exist from their own side. That which are, to that which are totally non-existent, empty. <coughs> and <coughs> uh, mad I, who exist, but do not exist from its own side. But who is totally non-existent, empty. The Guru said, "I'm the best enlightenment which exists, but doesn't, but doesn't exist. Uh, say, uh, say, um, exist, but doesn't exist from its own side, which is totally empty. Lead all the sentient beings who do, who exist, but do not exist from their own side, who are totally empty. To that enlightenment which exists, but do not, but, but does not exist from its own side, that which is totally empty." By my soul, <clears throat> uh, who exists but do not exist from, uh, from its own side, <clears throat> who is totally empty.